Good morning. Glad that you could join us here on Rajasabha TV this morning. I'm Tracy Shilchi. You're watching the breakfast news and here are the headlines. Prime Minister reviews demonetization decision with his cabinet colleagues, discusses ways for fast-tracking digitization, asserts cleaning the system of black money is high on agenda. But Rahul Gandhi is hitting the streets to highlight problems faced by people following the demonetization move to hold two public meetings in Uttar Pradesh this month. Rajya Sabha passes the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Bill 2014. A medded bill increases reservation for them in the public sector jobs, education institutions, besides imposing penalties for discrimination. Pakistan to approach India by month end to address concerns of the Indus Waters Treaty after the World Bank paused separate processes initiated by the two sides to resolve matters. And rebels in Syria say the deal to evacuate the last rebel-held parts of eastern Aleppo is back on after collapsing yesterday. Evacuations to take place today. Our top story, Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviewed his government's decision to demonetize 1,500 rupee notes. The review was held with his cabinet colleagues on Wednesday evening. Ways to fast-track digitization to enable larger cashless transactions was also discussed during the review. The issue was not on the agenda during the cabinet meet, hence when the Prime Minister initiated the topic, it was taken up and discussed post the meeting. The government's deadline of the 30th of December is fast approaching and several issues remain with regard to availability of the new currency. The government wants to expand the scope of digital payment modes so that they can be accepted at more places like metro stations and petrol pumps. A three-member committee of secretaries is already in place to study ways of transitioning India into a cashless economy. And while addressing his cabinet colleagues, the Prime Minister Modi also said that cleaning the system of black money and corruption is presently high on his agenda. He also said this while speaking after jointly inaugurating via video conferencing the Economic Times Asian Business Leaders Conclave in Kuala Lumpur, along with Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak. The Prime Minister said that India is moving towards a digital and cashless economy and is currently witnessing an economic transformation. Expressing happiness that the GST bill has been passed, he said it is expected to be implemented from next year. Presently, cleaning the system from black money and corruption is very, very high on my agenda. This comes goes closely after digitization and introduction of GST. Meanwhile, a united opposition came down heavily on the NDA government on Wednesday, accusing it of not allowing the debate on demonetization to take place in the lower house. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi even alleged that he has detailed information about personal corruption by the Prime Minister. The government, however, refuted the allegations, even though Rahul Gandhi has now decided to hit the streets to highlight people's problems post the decision. I have information on the Prime Minister that is going to explode his balloon. And I am not being allowed to speak in the House. So I would request the government to allow the entire opposition to speak in the House. Because he owes this country an explanation. And he cannot keep running away from the House. He cannot keep running away to pop concerts, to public meetings. Flanked by leaders of other opposition parties, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi came down all guns blazing against Prime Minister on Wednesday. His allegations of corruption against the Prime Minister were supported by leaders from the TMC, NCP and the Left Front, who accused the government of not allowing demonetization debate to take place in the House. Parliamentary democratic system is now going under threat only to resist that Rahul Gandhi will be not be allowed to speak and for which whole ruling party is opposing to run the 
How smoothly? Uh, the 16th party she has come together Sorry. against Sorry. this deal on a See that the Prime Minister is accountable to this parliament. He is an elected Prime Minister. And we, the MPs, are accountable to the people. We know that the Prime Minister is not ready to come in the parliament. He has the time to visit almost all the nations, you know. The government has been working on this government. It's a serious issue. कि किसी तरह हाउस नहीं चलना चाहिए और नोटबंदी को लेकर जो विपक्ष एक बार यूनाइटेड होकर ही एकजुट होकर जो सारी चीजों को सामने रखना चाहता है देश के सामने रखना चाहता है लोकसभा के माध्यम से उसको रखने से ही किया जा रहा है। The government, however, refuted the allegations and blamed the opposition for the deadlock inside parliament. Till today, he was not ready. He was not ready to face the parliament. He was not ready to speak. And he was not ready to make any earth-shattering revelations. Now, under the desperation and frustration, he is making such false and baseless charges. These parties are now standing in front of the people. What was the name of AICC before? What was the name of AICC? What was the name of AICC? Today, this agency became a kaledhan. All India Currency Candidate and the Currency Candidate the combative Congress Vice President held a meeting of senior party leaders on Wednesday evening. The party announced that Rahul Gandhi will hit the streets over the issue of demonetization to share the pain and anguish of the people affected by it. He is scheduled to address two public meetings in Uttar Pradesh later this month. Rahul ji in days to come will be travelling across the country. He will be reflecting the pain and anguish of the people, Congress members of parliament, Congress leaders, including Congress Vice President, will be reflecting that pain, will be persuading the government, will force the government to ensure that situation returns to normalcy and people no longer die in bank lines and are not truly made cashless. Both the government and the opposition parties are locked in a stalemate since the beginning of the winter session of parliament on demonetization. It has led to repeated adjournments in both houses leading to very little work being transacted in the session so far. Vishal Dahiya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And here's an update on, uh, apart from politics of course, an update on the demonetization move and what you can expect in the day ahead. Police can, uh, people I'm sorry, can use 500 rupee notes, the old ones, in fact, for paying utility bills or buying medicines till today midnight as the government has decided not to extend exemptions beyond 15 December. At the same time, mobile recharge facility with all 500 rupee notes will not be available from now. However, people can deposit all defunct 500 rupee notes in their bank accounts. The government had already withdrawn some of the relaxations like booking railway or plane tickets and payment at petrol pump and toll plazas by using the old 500 rupee notes, which of course ends tonight, midnight. The income tax department has warned taxpayers that they will have to face penal action if they try to misuse the provision of revised IT returns. The Central Board of Direct Taxes said that de post demonetization, some taxpayers may misuse this provision to revise the return filed by them for the earlier assessment year for manipulating income with an intention to show the current year's undisclosed earnings in the earlier filing. It said if the department finds any manipulation in the income in previous year's income tax return, it will conduct scrutiny. Meanwhile, a Pakistani national was arrested in fake currency notes of scrapped 500 rupees with a face value of 50,000 rupees was seized from him at the Surat railway station. Police seized 100 fake notes of all 500 rupee denominations from him. He has been handed over to the government railway police for further investigation. Delhi police also raided a hotel in central Delhi and, and recovered 3.25 crores in demonetized notes from five men who were allegedly involved in collecting black money from various Hawala operations in the national capital and delivering it in Mumbai for conversion to white. In Pune as well, police seized 67 lakh rupees in cash, of which 62 lakhs were in the new 2,000 rupee denomination notes from five people travelling in a car in the Vias. According to officials, 3,110 notes worth 62.20 lakhs and 4,800 notes worth 4.80 lakhs were seized. All right, in other news now coming in from Rajya Sabha, it passed the Right of Persons with Disabilities Bill 2014 with many amendments on Wednesday. The bill seeks to increase the categories of disabilities from the existing 7 to 21 
to enable differently able people to avail more facilities under various schemes with over 2.68 crores or 2.21 percent of the population the bill is expected to impart the differently abled question is that the bill has amended be passed those in favor please say aye, aye. those second please say no i think the i have it the i have it the i have it. bill the bill has amended is passed after days of stalemate on the demonetization issue the upper house finally passed the first bill in the winter session of parliament the house unanimously decided to take up the rights of persons with disabilities bill 2014 during zero hour the bill complies with the un convention on rights of persons with disabilities is vidhayak ke madhyam se hum nishakt jan vyakti adhikar ko aur zyada adhikar dene ja rahe hain abhi tak nishakt jano ki sat shreniyan hai इस विधेयक के पारित होने के बाद 21 श्रेणियां हो जाएगी और नाम नहीं शारीरिक मानसिक बौद्धिक आर्थिक दृष्टि से विकास के इसमें अनेक उपाय किए गए हैं द बिल सीक्स टू इंक्रीज रिजर्वेशन फॉर डिसेबल्ड पर्सन इन पब्लिक सेक्टर जॉब्स फ्रॉम द एग्जिस्टिंग 3% परसेंट टू फोर परसेंट एंड रिजर्व सीट्स इन हायर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन The amended version also recognizes disabilities due to acid attacks and Parkinson's disease. Persons with at least 40% disability are eligible for reservation in education and employment and preference in government schemes. It also provides for imprisonment for at least 6 months or up to 2 years along with a fine ranging between 10000 rupees and 5 lakh rupees for discriminating against differently able persons. Members across political spectrum lend support to the bill and urge the government to fill all vacancies for persons with disabilities and sensitize the public towards differently abled. By passing it we are not only fulfilling an international obligation we are fulfilling an obligation to crore the citizens no, no of our own country a very modest estimate is that 5% of people in india suffer from some form of disability disabled ki parbhasha ko aur saral kar dijiye number 2 disabled ko jo certificate banwana padta hai wo cmo pass jayega tamam jagah jo certificate banwane jayega us cheez ko bhi aap dekh lijiye usme badi pareshani usko hoti hai इनके साथ में व्यक्तिगत रूप से पिछले 30 वर्षों से जुड़ा रहा हूं इसलिए मैं ये कह सकता हूं कि इनको डिसेबल कहना भी ठीक नहीं है ये डिफरेंटली एबल लोग हैं इनके अंदर कैपेबिलिटी वो है जो हमारे अंदर नहीं है इसलिए दे शुड बी कॉल्ड डिफरेंटली एबल इवन दो जनरली कंडीशन बिल्स आर गुड देर आर इन मेनी प्लेसेस गवर्नमेंट हैज ब्रॉट इन अमेंडमेंट्स विच विल करटेल द राइट ऑफ द डिजेबल्ड दैट इज माई फियर the reservation here is 4% is given for these people has been given at 4% sir i would request you to make sure that none of these vacancies are left unfulfilled in september 2014 the bill was referred to the standing committee on social justice and empowerment of the 82 suggestions 59 were incorporated the bill will now go to lok sabha and once cleared will replace the persons with disabilities equal opportunities protection of rights and full participation act 1995 Shruti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the upper house also saw frequent disruptions yesterday over allegations of corruption against MOS uh, home uh, Kiran Rijiju. Uh, opposition protests led to the adjournment of proceedings in the upper house. Take a look. As soon as the upper house cleared the rights of persons with disabilities bill 2014, Congress MP Anand Sharma raised the issue of corruption allegations against MOS Home Affairs Kiran Rijiju. However, the deputy chairman disallowed it, saying that rules had not been followed for raising the matter in the house. I have given the notice, sir. Please, please, sir. I have referred. No, I am not making any allegation. I am referring to the CBO report, which has pointed out that there has been abuse of office. No, no, that you cannot raise now. And the CBO has given notice on you. You give notice on you, whether you can. No. allegation is without prior intimation to the chair cannot be allowed amit din leader of the house arun jaitley refuted the allegations against his cabinet colleague no, kind of pretend one politics can do let him raise the issue and let him wait for my reply on the issue we will examine every fact the allegation made by the congress party is totally false and fabricated there is no allegation what the name of i am willing to i dare you for a debate on this see an mp just holding a reputation this is the allegation 
The opposition, though, continued its protests, leading to adjournment of the proceedings for the day. Vishal Dahiya, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. Meanwhile, with this, the, it was the issue of demonetization that continued to stall proceedings in Lok Sabha yesterday. The opposition raised the issue of an alleged corruption scandal involving uh, Kiran Rijiju there as well. And Lok Sabha was adjourned till Thursday, just over an hour after convening amid slogan shouting. The Lok Sabha on Wednesday met after four days, but the scene was no different as the lower house failed to transact any legislative business amid continuous uproar. As soon as question hour began, the opposition trained its guns on the government on the demonetization issue and the alleged involvement of MOS home Kiran Rijiju in an alleged scandal. Opposition members from the Congress, the TMC and the left parties were on their feet, with some members from the left also trooping into the well. Disruption forced Speaker Sumitra Mahajan to adjourn the House till noon. House stands adjourned to meet again at 12 o'clock. After question hour, Congress leader Malikarjun Kharge raised the issue of inconvenience being faced by people due to the ban on 500,000 rupee notes. In response, BJP leader Jagdambika Pal accused the Congress of supporting black money holders. The Speaker tried in vain to maintain peace in the House. With the protests continuing, the Speaker adjourned the House for the day. The House stands adjourned to meet again on Thursday. Lok Sabha has seen a virtual washout since the winter session started on 16th of November, with both the opposition and the government trading charges on the demonetization issue. With Pranav Goswami and Ravindra Shioran, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. With a quick break here, but more news follows in a bit. Stay with us. CERN is a basically a technical hub, I would say, mm -hmm. where a lot of innovation happens. There are three associate members now. Mm -hmm. One is uh, Turkey, mm -hmm. Pakistan, mm -hmm. India. Being associate member, it opens a bigger window for India to contribute, as well as tech, okay. the knowledge. Watch Eureka with Dr. Praful Kumar Behra, Associate Professor, IIT Madras, on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. Let's continue getting you some national news. And the Union Cabinet Wednesday approved the proposal of Ministry of Shipping to replace the Major Port Trusts Act of 1963 by the Major Port Authorities Bill 2016, which will help major ports to perform with greater efficiency as they will get full autonomy in decision-making. The bill is aimed at reorienting the governance model in central ports to landlord port model in line with the successful global practice. The cabinet also gave its approval for signing of revised air services agreement between India and Nigeria. Approval to protocol amending the agreement between India and Tajikistan for avoidance of double taxation also came up. The protocol will enable sharing of information exchange and the double taxation avoidance agreement with other law enforcement agencies for non-tax purposes. In another decision, the cabinet cleared the signing of an agreement with Kyrgyzstan on cooperation in the area of agriculture and food-related industry, as well as tourism. The cabinet also gave its ex post facto approval of India's approach to climate change negotiations at the Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change held in Marrakesh last month. Pakistan will approach India by the end of this month to address its concerns on the Ratli and Kishanganga projects under the Indus Waters Treaty. The move comes a day after the World Bank paused the separate processes initiated by the Indian and Pakistani side under the treaty to allow them to resolve their disagreements. Pakistan's Indus Water Commissioner is likely to establish a telephonic contact with his Indian counterpart by the end of this month to address Islamabad's concerns on the design of the projects. Pakistan said on Wednesday that it will again approach World Bank in February 
if India refuses to accept the demands for change in design of the projects or tries to use delaying tactics. Meanwhile, India on Wednesday finalized the details of a task force on Indus Water Treaty, which will be formed within one week to stop river waters going waste in Pakistan. The Treaty of 1960 covers the water distribution and sharing rights of six rivers, Beas, Ravi, Satlaj, Indus, Jenab and Jhelum. Our international news and the U.S. Fed Reserve has raised the benchmark interest rate by a quarter percentage point as expected. The rise has been citing an improving economy with one month to go before U.S. President-elect Donald Trump takes office. The policy-setting Federal Open Market Committee voted unanimously to increase the key federal fund rates to a range of 0.5 to 0.75 percent, but repeated that it expects the world's biggest economy will require only gradual increases going forward. The rate increase from the previous range of 0.25 to 0.5 percent is the first hike since December 2015 and only the second in a decade. Today, the Federal Open Market Committee decided to raise the target range for the federal funds rate by one quarter percentage point, bringing it to one half to three quarters percent. In doing so, my colleagues and I are recognizing the considerable progress the economy has made toward our dual objectives of maximum employment and price stability. And staying with the U.S. Indian American PepsiCo CEO Indra Nui has joined Donald Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum. Chennai Bon Nui is the only Indian origin executive in the 19 member President's Strategic and Policy Forum, uh, which was announced earlier this week. Three new members were also announced in addition to the existing 16. The other corporate bigwigs to join the forum are Uber CEO Travis Kalanick and SpaceX and Tesla Chairman Elon Musk. The members of the forum will be providing their individual views on how government policy impacts economic growth, job creation and productivity to the president. Donald Trump takes office on the 20th of January 2017. Now to Syria and equating the ongoing Aleppo in fighting to almost committing a war crime, the United Nations has expressed anguish over the continuous raids by the Syrian government and its allies. However, airstrikes resumed over rebel-held territories where at least 50,000 civilians and many rebel fighters await their evacuation hours after the fallout of the first agreement. However, now rebels say that the deal is back on. A ceasefire agreement to allow civilians and rebel fighters to leave besieged eastern Aleppo is back on after a collapsed truce. Evacuations are expected to take place in the early hours today. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry called his Russian, Turkish and Qatari counterparts stressing the need to continue seeking a ceasefire for the besieged city and the resumption of political talks to end the war. In all of these conversations, the Secretary has stressed the need to continue to try to stop the bloodshed and the violence uh, through a meaningful ceasefire. He also continued to stress uh, the, the desperate need for humanitarian aid to get in and for the establishment of humanitarian corridors for people to get out and to be able to get out safely. With the new deal in place, it aims to allow simultaneous evacuation of two villages besieged by rebels in northwestern Syria. However, hours after the first agreement, brokered mainly by Russia and Turkey, collapsed, airstrikes resumed over rebel-held territory, where at least 50,000 civilians remain. The UN said raids by the Syrian government and its allies on an area packed with civilians most likely violated international law. It's almost certainly a, a violation of international law and most probably war crimes that are being committed uh, right now as we speak um, because you cannot possibly distinguish between civilians and fighters in, in, in this way and, and under these circumstances when they're all packed in so close together. Eastern Aleppo has been held by rebels since 2012, but a major government offensive backed by Russian air power in recent months has almost driven the rebels out. A complete control over Aleppo will be the biggest victory for Syrian forces since the upheaval to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad began in 2011. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. 
In other news now, the Supreme Court is likely to pronounce its verdict today on the recommendations made by the Justice R.M. Lodha Committee for the removal of BCCI office bearers. The BCCI and all those related to the issue would be relieved to get an additional time to make a stronger case for themselves. In the status report, the Lodha panel has sought a direction to appoint former Home Secretary G.K. Pillay as an observer to guide BCCI in administrative works including award of contracts, transparency norms and holding of future domestic, international and IPL matches. On the 21st of October this year, the Apex Court had frozen all financial transactions between the BCCI and state cricket associations by directing the Apex cricket body not to disperse any funds even for match purposes until they resolve to abide by the Justice Aram Lodha panel recommendations on reforms. And here are some more sporting action in sports beat. Olympic silver medalist PV Sindhu has won her opening match in the, Sup the World Super Series Finals badminton tournament in Dubai on Wednesday. Sindhu defeated Japan's Akane Yamaguchi 12-21, 21-8, 21-15 in the Group B match. Sindhu will next face China Sun Yu in her next group game. Ace Indian shuttler Saina Nehwal has been named the Integrity Ambassador by the Badminton Achha World Cross. Federation to promote clean, Maria fair and honourable sport. BWF chose five players as ambassadors who were announced before the Dubai World Super Series Finals on Tuesday. The players, part of BWF's I Am Badminton campaign, will act as role models through their conduct on and off court. India will take on Spain in the quarterfinal of the World Junior Hockey Cup in Lucknow today. While Belgium will clash with Argentina, Germany will take on England and Australia will be up against Netherlands in the other quarterfinal matches. Earlier, England thrashed Canada 6-0 and Australia beat South Korea by a score of 5-0. The semi-final matches will be played on the 16th and the final on the 18th of December. And finally, the sports story that's melting hearts across the world. Almost a year after five-year-old Murtaza Ahmadi's image wearing a Lionel Messi jersey, a plastic bag literally made from a plastic bag went viral. The little Afghan boy made a special trip to Qatar and walked on the pitch with the football superstar before a friendly between Qatar and Barcelona. And he refused to let go. We leave you with those images. Have a great day.